Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that an object is 12,000 kilometers above the surface of Jupiter. What is the gravitational potential V at this point? And a hint for you is to refer to your data sheet for the Jupiter data. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find gravitational potential V. We know the universal constant of gravitation, G, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. The mass of Jupiter from the data sheet is 1.90 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. The distance R is going to be the radius of Jupiter, which we'll call R subscript J, plus the 12,000 kilometers, which is the distance above the surface of Jupiter. So if we plug in our radius of Jupiter into there, we get 7.15 times 10 to the 7 plus 1.2 times 10 to the 7, just writing 12,000 kilometers in terms of meters in scientific notation. And this gives us 8.35 times 10 to the 7 meters. And writing down our equation now for gravitational potential, we get V equals minus G M subscript J divided by R. So we're just using M J to mean Jupiter here. And substituting in our numbers, we get minus 6 0.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 1.90 times 10 to the 27 divided by 8.35 times 10 to the 7. Putting that into your calculator now should give you an answer of minus 1.52 times 10 to the 9 joules per kilogram. Question 2 says that a global positioning satellite with a mass of 220 kilograms is in orbit around the Earth at a height of 19,300 kilometres. Part A says to calculate the gravitational potential at this height. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find gravitational potential V. We know that capital G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. The mass of the Earth, which we'll call capital M subscript E, is equal to 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, which you'll get on the data sheet. The distance R is equal to the radius of the Earth plus 19,300 kilometers, which is the height above the Earth's surface. And so putting in our radius of the Earth, which you'll also get on the data sheet, we get 6.4 times 10 to the 6 plus 1.93 times 10 to the 7. Again, just writing this 19,300 kilometers in meters and in scientific notation. And this comes out as 2.57 times 10 to the 7 meters. So writing down our equation, we get V equals minus GM E over R. Substituting in the numbers, we get minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6.0 times 10 to the 24 divided by 2.57 times 10 to the 7. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of minus 1.56 times 10 to the 7 joules per kilogram. Part B says to calculate the gravitational potential energy of the satellite. Well, remember the expression for gravitational potential energy is this, EP equals minus GME times M over R. Again, we're just using capital M subscript E to mean the mass of the Earth. And if we split this up into minus GME over R times M, then you should remember that this expression is the gravitational potential, which we've actually just worked out in part A. And we want to times that by the mass M of our satellite. So this equals minus 1.56 times 10 to the 7, times 220, where we're using our answer there from part A. And then putting that into your calculator, we get an answer of minus 3.43 times 10 to the 9 joules. Lastly, question 3 says that a rocket of mass 2 times 10 to the 5 kilograms makes a journey from the Earth's surface to 20,000 kilometers above the surface. Part A says to calculate the gravitational potential at the Earth's surface. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find V. We know that G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared, as always. The mass of the Earth is 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, again getting that data from the data sheet. The distance R is equal to the radius of the Earth in this case because we're talking about the Earth's surface just now, and that is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. Again, that value can be found on the data sheet. And so writing down our equation, we get V equals minus GME over R. Substituting in our numbers, we get minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6.0 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.4 times 10 to the 6 and if you put all of that into your calculator we should get an answer of minus 6.25 times 10 to the 7 joules per kilogram. Part B says to determine the gain in gravitational potential energy of the rocket. Well first we need to calculate the gravitational potential energy at both the surface of the earth and 20,000 kilometers above the earth's surface and then find the difference between the two. So at the surface of the Earth, first of all, we've got our expression for gravitational potential energy, which is EP equals minus GME M over R. If we now write this in terms of the gravitational potential and the mass M, we get minus GME over R times M. And so substituting in our numbers, we get minus 6.25 times 10 to the 7 times 2 times 10 to the 5, 
Where did this number come from here? Well, that was using our answer from part A. And putting that into your calculator should give us an answer of minus 1.25 times 10 to the 13 joules. We're not finished though, remember we need to do it the same again but for 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface and then subtract. So at 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, we're trying to find EP. We know that G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. ME, the mass of the Earth, is 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The distance R is equal to the radius of the Earth plus the 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So putting in our number for the radius of the Earth, we get 6.4 times 10 to the 6 plus 2 times 10 to the 7. Again, you get that from your data sheet. And that is just this number written in scientific notation and in meters. And so putting that into your calculator gives 2.64 times 10 to the 7 meters. And lastly, our mass is 2 times 10 to the 5 kilograms. So writing down our equation, we get EP equals minus GME M over R. Substituting in the numbers, we get minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times 6.0 times 10 to the 24, times 2 times 10 to the 5, divided by 2.64 times 10 to the 7. And if you put all of that into your calculator, we should get an answer of minus 3.03 times 10 to the 12 joules. But again, we're not finished yet. And you should notice that this is bigger, i.e. less negative than our first value. So now we need to take the difference between the two. So we have that our gain in gravitational potential energy is equal to the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy, which is equal to minus 3.03 times 10 to the 12, which we've just worked out, minus the minus 1.25 times 10 to the 13. Notice the double negative here will become a positive, so we end up with 9.47 times 10 to the 12 joules, i.e. a positive answer because this number was more negative than this one due to the larger power. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.